Good evening, boys and girls. Welcome to Lesson 11.5, Three-Dimensional Figures. Our essential question is how can you identify, classify, and describe three-dimensional figures? Let's get started. Now, there are three main families I want to teach you about polyhedrons. The first two are prisms and pyramids. A prism has two congruent polygons as bases. The faces of the prism are all rectangles. So if you look at this one right here, I have two congruent polygons that are bases. Here's a triangle and a triangle, and all the faces are rectangles. Do you see how there's rectangle faces all around? So we would call this a triangular prism. This one, as you can see, has two congruent polygon bases. They're pentagons, and all the faces are rectangles. So this would be a pentagonal prism. And this last one right here shows that you have two congruent polygons as bases. They are rectangles, and all the faces are also rectangles. So we would call this a rectangular prism. Now a pyramid is different from a prism. A pyramid only has one base. A pyramid is named for the shape of the base. The base is what it sits on. Now the faces of the pyramid will all be triangles. So if you look at this one example right here, you can see I have a triangle base and all my faces are triangles. So this would be a triangular pyramid. Here's an example of a base that looks like a pentagon, but all my faces are triangles. So this is a pentagonal pyramid. And this last one right here, I have a square base but all my faces are triangles, so it's a square pyramid. Now I want you to look back up here at the prisms. I want you to think of it like a family name, just like you have a last name. This family name is prism, so the last name would be prism. The first name is the shape of the base, which is why we have a triangular prism, pentagonal prism, and a square or a rectangular prism. Now let's look at the pyramid. It's the same concept. Pyramid is the family name, so that's the last name. And the first name would be the name of the base. Triangular pyramid, pentagonal pyramid, square pyramid. Now the other family name I want to share with you are non-polyhedrons. That means that they have curved surfaces. Some three-dimensional figures have curved surfaces. These solid figures are not polyhedrons. Polyhedron means it cannot roll. It's all made up of polygons. Here are three main non-polyhedrons that you'll need to know. The first one is a sphere. It has no bases and it's just one curved surface, which means it can continuously roll. The other one is called a cone. It has one circular base and one curved surface. So a cone has a base and it's a circle and the curved surface means that it can roll on it and it only has one. The other one I want to teach you is called a cylinder. A cylinder has two congruent circular bases and it has one curved surface, which means your bases are circles and then it can roll on the curved surface. Now some examples that you might see of a cylinder in the real world would be something like a can of soda or possibly a garbage can or even a can of soup. So let's take a look in our Go Math book at question number two and three. Question number two, you need to classify your solid figure. Please write if it's a prism, a pyramid, or a cone, cylinder, or sphere. Now if you want to get fancy, I don't even mind if you give the first name and last name of it. And also please write down the name of this shape as well. All right, go ahead and write it down now. Okay, for number two, you should have called it a prism, but if you really wanted to get fancy, you could have called it a rectangular prism. And for number three, you should have called it a cone. All right, go ahead and write down the names for questions four and five. Okay, for number four, you should have said that it is a triangular pyramid because it has a triangle base 
with triangle faces and it's a pentagonal pyramid for number five because you have a pentagonal base with five triangular faces. All right, go ahead and press pause and write the names for questions six and seven. Okay, for number six, you should have said it's a cylinder because it has two congruent circle bases and one curved surface. And for number seven, it's just like question two. It's called a rectangular prism because it has two congruent bases that are rectangles and all the faces on the sides are rectangles. All right, go ahead and press pause and write down the names for questions eight and nine. All right, boys and girls, for number eight, you should have said cone. And number nine, you should have said hexagonal prism. Number eight's a cone because it has one base, that's a circle, with one curved surface. And number nine's a hexagonal prism because you have two hexagon bases and six rectangular faces. All right, let's read number 10 together. It says Darian is making a solid figure out of folded paper. His solid figure has six congruent faces that are all squares. What solid figure did Darian make? Remember, they're all squares. All right, boys and girls, if he had a figure that is all squares, that would be an example of a cube, also called a square prism. All right, let's go on to question number 11. For number 11, it says Nanako said she drew a square pyramid and that all of the faces are triangles. Is this possible? Okay, for this one, you should have said no. And the reason why is because the base is a square and all of the faces are triangles. I'm going to try to do this from a bird's eye view. But remember, a face, the definition of a face is any flat surface on a solid figure. So technically it has four triangle faces, but it also has a base on the bottom that's a square. So it's a flat surface. So therefore, you would have to say no, not all of the faces are triangles, only four of them. One is a square. And here are your two homework questions that are about our lesson. Answer the, them carefully and then do questions three through six for review. And at the top of the page, please write down if you're a one novice, two apprentice, three practitioner, or four the expert about solid figures. And we'll do lots of practice tomorrow in class. So we'll see you tomorrow. Have a great night.